Today on Mid-Missouri Art News, Kelsey Hammond, Executive Director of the Columbia Art League, uh, will be sharing what is happening at the Columbia Art League. And in addition, we will visit with artist Matthew Kurz and his mother, Brenda Kaiser. <laughs> Welcome to JCTV, Mid-Missouri Art News, supported by many art enthusiasts coming to you from the capital city of Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm your host, Rick Jay, and with two special guests today, Columbia Art League uh, Executive Director Kelsey Hammond and artist Matthew Kurz uh, through his mother, Brenda Kaiser. Please join me, if you will, in welcoming first Kelsey Hammond of the Columbia, Missouri Art League to JCTV, Mid-Missouri Art News. Ms. Hammond, uh, it's welcome to Mid-Missouri Art News. Thank you. Great. Well, Kelsey, if I may call you by your first name. Of course. Uh, can you share a little bit about you and those highlights of your life that best describe <laughs> Kelsey Hammond? Sure, I mean, it's a long story. Okay. I'll try to sum it up. Um, so I am from the San Francisco Bay Area. I grew up in California and um, my family are all artists on the oh, whole oh. and I always felt like I was not really an artist so I I had a camera and I made photos and I you know studied art history because I love to be around artists sure. and to learn about them and what they do um, but as an artist myself I didn't really feel like that uh -huh. um, until graduate school I was working in a bookstore and my friend said maybe you should go to grad school for photography because you Oh. work in a dark room all the time you take photos all the time and so um, so I went to grad school and got my master's in photography I and um, and then I moved to Columbia with my husband and we started our family here and so now we own a bookstore in in Columbia on 9th oh. Street called Yellow Dog Bookshop oh, and our kids go to school in Columbia so I'm now I'm invested would you like to say hello to those children and your, uh, your, yeah your... hi Sally hi Atticus and your husband and Joe, I love you too. You can't leave Joe <laughs> out. I can't either. leave him out of it. No, <laughs> okay, no, no. great. <laughs> well, can you share with us when or how then that you were first inspired, really, to become involved with the Columbia Art League and your artworks? Uh, what inspires you, even today, to continue uh, your interest in the art world? Yeah, I mean, when I um, growing up, I was always involved with nonprofits and um, oh. volunteering or working for them or helping out as best I could in any way that I could. Um, my first job was, uh, when I was eight, it was for my mom, but it was for a nonprofit sure. and I was stamping, you know, the mailings that were going oh, out. So I I've, I've been involved for a long time. So um, nonprofits are really where my love lies because I, I really believe they um, create a community and really round out the experiences for all the people there in yes, whatever it is. Yeah. So, um, and then because I think because of my family being artists and then my own foray into art, um, working with the arts has always been really important to me as well. So those two things combined makes the Columbia Art League like oh, the perfect yes. kind of space for me to be in. And Perfect. I worked at Mizzou for about 10 years at the craft studio. I ran that space and that was an art studio and gallery space for Mizzou students. I see. And so I did that for a long time. And so right. the Art League is kind of the next step in that same path. Right. So it's been really Amazing. So you're somewhat not only, not only a title of as executive director, but you're more or less a facilitator for yeah. a lot of the students, and now for anyone. Yeah. And some of the programs that you offer through uh, the Columbia Art League are definitely commendable, uh, especially your Art in the Park yeah. and uh, other programs, which you'll share with us. And, and we've, uh, you've brought um, with you some artwork that we'll be able to put on a timeline and, yeah. and uh, actually present what is happening uh, for visual. Well, 
Does the CAL, as we call, have many projects now in process that you'd like to bring to the table for viewers uh, to think about yeah. uh, looking into or visiting? Yeah, We're, right now we just rehung our entire gallery. Um, we have about 100, over 100 artworks in there right now um, wow. for our members show. So every year we have two members shows for our Columbia Art League members um, and it's a vast array of different artworks. So we have some people who are woodworkers, some people who are photographers, painters, jewelry makers, the whole gamut. It's pretty oh, amazing. Yeah. So oh, then we yeah. hang this very eclectic show. And, um, and it, this show is, in particular is really beautiful. Um, they, the artists were thinking about giving the gift of art. That's kind of what we're, ah. what we're calling it. The sparkling arts give the gift of art. So we are encouraging people to come in and see the show. Um, our reception is on Friday from 6 to 8, Friday, um, November 8th from 6 to 8. And, um, but the show will be throughout the entire month of November and December, so oh, for the whole holiday season. Uh -huh. um, and if you find something you like, if you buy it, you can take it with you right then, and then we'll contact the artist, and they can come in and bring something else in. So uh -huh. it's good for everybody, and you can... I you know, can, buy yeah, a unique so, gift. I, it's a great time of the year yeah, to be looking yeah. for those special art pieces, uh, maybe even decoration for that uh, tree. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, well, excellent. Uh, now, you, your next project after that. Uh, yeah, uh, so we have our, we just um, published our uh, next year's gallery schedule, so we have uh, lots of stuff coming up. Um, the next gallery show will be called Taste or what we all lovingly refer to as the food show. So all of the artists um, make something based around food and then local chefs in the area will make um, a, a dish that they can share with people so people can buy tickets and come in and they will be inspired, the chefs are inspired by the artworks that are on the wall. Yes. So you can kind of have that. So that's the next event after that. Now our last guest here at uh, Mid-Missouri Art News, uh, I can't recall the name, excuse me, um, but he uh, had won in uh, the food oh, yeah. show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I understand he's a member. Well, now, yeah. I mentioned the uh, membership. Uh, yeah. Can you give us a general idea of what it would, uh, that involves, becoming yeah. a member? Uh, and does that also, if you become a member, does that uh, give you the opportunity to possibly submit your work to be juried into yes. the different shows? Yeah, How does so, that work for you folks? Yeah, so, so there's sort of, um, I think of it as kind of two directions of membership. So we have our artists who want to be members, who are, you know, want to participate in the gallery shows, who want to have discounts on art classes, that kind of thing. So your membership gives you um, a little less that you have to pay for the getting into the shows or being, you know, part oh, of the jury you. process. Uh -huh. Um, but also to take an art class to get better at what you're doing or to try oh. something new, which is fun. Right. And then um, the other sort of vein of membership is um, if you're a patron of the arts and you want to, you know, keep an institution like the Columbia Art League around and you want to help us out in, um, in any way that you can, you can also become a member that way. So they sort of have two, two arms of that. Now, if I was going to save my pennies, what would I want to possibly look at saving for a, a, like a general membership? Or so yeah, a, or a, a basic membership, the friend membership is $50. Mm -hmm. um, so that's for an entire year, which you think yes. about it is. That's a lot for a, $50. Yeah, yeah so. you get a lot out of that. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's a good one. If you're a family and you want to send your kid to one of our classes for yes. kids, then you can sign up for that membership and they will get a reduced rate for their class. And you can also participate in the gallery shows. Right. Um, so there's all sorts of benefits like that. If you're a business and you want to have a membership, you can do that as well. And through, what happens there is when you, that, that membership is still for the whole year and you'll get um, a gallery rental so you can host a party in our gallery. Oh, so excellent. that's part of that cost. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, other sorts of, of good stuff there. So yeah. it a is lot a of great, benefits. It's a great facility. So we'll give you that address here in a moment. I yeah. hope you will visit the shows. Now is there, I'm sure there's not an age limit uh, but how about your minimum age as a member? So as a member, it is 16. So that's a, 16. there's a student membership, which is $20, um, and that is for anyone who is currently in school um, with a valid student ID, so 16 and up. Right. Okay, what, what, what is the most exciting uh, venue or, uh, shall we say, um, project that you really 
feel great about. I'm sure you like them all, but maybe. Yeah, better. well, I started in July, so I oh. am still collecting all of the events and things that we do and trying sure. to figure out how they all run. All right. So, um, mm -hmm. and I've had a lot of great help doing that. Um, I'm looking forward to Art in the Park, which is in June, yes. of mm -hmm. course, and um, that event is uh, multi, yeah, I mean, it's just, people sort of are expect it to be super overwhelming, which I think it probably will be for me, but yes. I'm so excited. And I got to volunteer there last year and it was so much fun. I and, had the best and time. And artists so. come from all around. They come from so all over just, the, all over the country. The country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. United States. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so, well, that's my favorite. I, yeah. So I just, not only walking in the, uh, the park is one thing, uh, beauty around us, nature wise, but then you see all this multitude of different uh, types of art and, uh, uh, the um, overwhelming expertise that goes into some of these paintings and, and artworks. Uh, I know they're all a chore in a sense yeah. to each individual, depending on what he's uh, into. So uh, that, uh, I, I look forward to that. Now, yeah. what, when is that again? Then? That'll be the first weekend in June at Stevens Lake Park. So that's uh, June 6th and 7th. Great, great. Yeah. Well, we're running out of time. So would you like to share any closing words with our viewers? Uh, your phone number, email, the Columbia Art League. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So our, um, you can visit us in the gallery, and we are on 9th Street in Columbia between the Missouri Theater and Shakespeare's. That's usually what people remember more than our, than our actual the address. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it is uh, 207 South 9th Street. Um, in Columbia. And then you can also visit us by going to our website, which is columbiaartleague.org. And you can find our classes on there, all about membership. You can see pictures of our current gallery show, all sorts of things. So oh, excellent. there's a lot of stuff on that website. Okay, super. Yeah. That's a, usually a good contact information. Yeah, so yeah. I hope your folks will take time and, and visit the Columbia Art League. They produce a lot of great uh, artwork and uh, shows throughout the year. It's a, really a treat. Well, on uh, behalf of JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News, I want to thank you again for you. sharing with us here on Mid-Missouri Art News. Thanks so much. Okay. Well, after the break, we meet Matthew Kurz and Mother Brenda Kaiser, who will surely inspire you to take a close look at how he enjoys being a part of the art scene in Mid-Missouri. Stay with us. There's more. Uh, mamá, ¿Mm? lo estuve pensando bien y no voy a ir a la universidad. ¿Pero qué dices, hijo? Tienes que ir a la universidad. Es que me ofrecieron un trabajo y yo ya quiero comprarme mis cosas, mi teléfono, mi auto, mi... Hijo, la universidad es mucho más importante que un auto nuevo. No, mamá, no lo es. ¿Sí? No. Sí. Mamá, no. Y además, es mi decisión. ¿Tu decisión? Pues decide qué vas a estudiar, porque a la universidad vas a ir. De tus palabras de hoy depende su mañana. El Hispanic Scholarship Fund tiene la información para que ayudes a tus hijos a ir a la universidad y tengan un mejor futuro. The Crayon Box That Talk. While walking in a toy store the day before today, I overheard a crayon box with many things to say. I don't like red, said yellow, and green said nor do I. And no one here likes orange, but no one knows just why. We are a box of crayons that doesn't get along. Said blue to all the others. Hmm, something here is wrong. Well, I bought that box of crayons and took it home with me and laid out all the colors so the crayons could all see. They watched me as I colored, with red and blue and green and black and white and orange and every color in between. They watched as green became the grass and blue became the sky. The yellow sun was shining bright on white clouds drifting by. Colors changing as they touch, becoming something new. They watched me as I colored. They watched till I was through. And when I'd finally finished, I began to walk away. And as I did, the crayon box had something more to say. 
I do like red, said yellow, and green said so do I. And blue, you are terrific, so high up in the sky. We are a box of crayons. Each one of us unique. But when we get together, the picture is complete. Welcome back to Mid-Missouri Art News. Um, I'd like to introduce now to you um, Miss Brenda Kaiser and artist Matthew Kurz. Uh, welcome, Matthew and Brenda, to JCTV's Spotlight, uh, Spotlight on the Arts, Mid-Missouri Art News. Thank you for having us. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, Brenda and uh, Matthew, I. Uh, if I may call you by your first names, mm -hmm. 15 minutes is not long enough to cover a lot of times our um, uh, history and uh, the background of each artist, but uh, hopefully in the future we'll get you back and uh, cover more. But uh, if you could, can you, uh, Brenda, share all that makes up Matthew's art world? Uh, we will try and cover the highlights at least. You come to the round table today as a spokesperson for our son, uh, artist Matthew. Please share with us uh, a little bit about this amazing artist, son Matthew. Matthew is the oldest of four of my sons and we, he grew up in Cole Camp, Missouri and graduated from high school there. His art interest began whenever he was a junior in high school and whenever he became a senior he decided I want to go to Kansas City Art Institute and see if I can make a career out of art. And in his, um, in 2006, that earlier part of January, he got accepted to, for an interview oh, and got to take some of his artwork and be judged by some of the professors there and was so excited. Yes, uh, honorable, huh? How would I know? Yes. Three weeks after that date, his life completely changed. He was driving to school with one of his brothers and when coming on top of a crest of a hill was blinded by the sunlight and drove under a school bus. I see. He sustained a traumatic brain injury to where three-fourths of his brain has been completely changed. I see. And he was right-handed when he drew before and he couldn't use his right arm anymore and still to this day cannot. I see. So the art accident or the accident greatly changed things. He sure. kind of gave up, mm. thought he couldn't do art anymore, and I kept whispering in his ear, you're going to be God's artist, and I'm not giving up on you. Ah, excellent. Yeah. So I would take him down to the um, kitchen area in the hallways at Rusk Rehabilitation in Columbia, Missouri, and kept whispering in his ear, showing him paintings of an artist who was a stroke victim, and they too lost the ability to use their right side, and learn to do things with their left. Yes. It wasn't until about two years after his accident that through a very encouraging occupational therapist, she challenged Matthew. Come on, Matthew. Can you give us something with your left hand? Can you draw a stick person? And a he had been person? refusing for a long time. Uh -huh. And finally, out of anger and frustration, so people would leave him alone, he very difficultly picked up the pencil and drew a stick person and put the pencil down and said, there. Oh, my. So that was a major <laughs> move at that point, Matthew. At that point. Yes. Eventually. Eventually, uh-huh. And? It was then that we thought, Matthew, you can still do this. So we gave him many things to use his left hand, colored pencils, crayons, markers, ink pens to try to encourage him to learn to move his left hand to do like he once did with his right. Basically retrain yes. the, the brain. And yes. he became very encouraged mm -hmm. um, oh. on his own yes. and was very, very um, consistent with it. And then we decided, how about we try painting? Uh -huh. Now he didn't paint before he got hurt. He uh -huh. drew, Just drew uh -huh. or charcoal. He loved to draw trees a lot before he got hurt and was very fascinated by many different modalities you can do with a tree. So he, um, with his one brother, went to the art class that summer with Professor Paul Allen at State Fair Community College. Uh -huh. And he didn't want to be there. He did not like oh, it. Wow. For he couldn't see color. Oh, I see. He could only see black and white. Uh -huh. And learning to use the paintbrush 
and how to put it on the canvas was very difficult for him. Sure, I bet. You can imagine. The last painting that he painted that first session was a silhouette of himself. Very sketchy like, but very inspirational. Uh -huh. Brain injury individuals can see halos around things at the very beginning after their injuries, and he was drawing a lot of things with halos. And this has a halo around the silhouette of himself. I and see. that inspired him, maybe more I can do. And uh -huh. so the world of art has now become a salvation for him, an inspiration, a way for him to speak for himself that he can't, like I am now. Right. Um, yeah. Art is a great passion for him. I, yes, a passion for us all. And your artwork is so amazing, especially your trees. I love your cottonwood trees. Yeah. And I'll share those on the timeline with our viewers. Yes. So yes, I am, I'm just so uh, impressed that uh, you've picked up from zero and, and really come to be a, a recognizable artist here in the yeah. state of Missouri. Yeah. So that and then and, and now I, I guess we we have to talk about um, some of the um, recognitions that um, uh, Matthew has received in the past. Now, how many years has this been going? Uh, Fourteen for? years now. Fourteen years into your your art. Mm -hmm. Wow! Mm -hmm. So you are, you are getting better every year. I'm yeah. trying to. I'm 75. I'm still trying to get better. <laughs> Well, I, I, I work at it. <laughs> so I can understand. I think every artist, Matthew, has to start somewhere and then finally yeah, gets. Everybody does. Yeah, everybody does. Right. So now, do you have any artwork, any projects right now that's in process that you'd like to bring to our attention? Maybe you have a couple in the in the works that you uh, might want to talk about. People can look forward to seeing uh, in the future. And that future might be again. You was in the uh, the Sedalia, uh, USA, Missouri State uh, Fair. Did you have a piece in the top 50 this year? Yes, this painting here is called Leaves in the Morning Light. And Matthew got to be chosen to have this as one of the top 50 paintings at the Missouri State Fair. Yes. Trees are very um, inspirational to him. They are a source of strength for you. Yeah. and many different ways. And some of the paintings that, he, that you will see he has, his favorite is Walk on the Forest Floor, which is laying on the floor of the forest of sequoia trees. Oh my, yes. That is yeah. one of his favorites. Wow. That he also magnificent. loves yeah. um, aspen trees, and aspen. he has one tree that, one picture that he painted from a photograph I took from vacation a couple of years ago, and he painted that for me from that photograph. And that's a white bark also? Yes. 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 Oh, excellent. Um, so, Matthew, you, you're just like any artist. You can see um, things that inspire you to oh, yeah. then move forward with your paint oh, yeah. So it's, it's great. You really accomplished a lot uh, through the years. Uh, so meeting um, Matthew and Brenda at the uh, Civilian Visual Arts Association, and at a couple of shows, uh, uh, I just had to invite them to the show. Uh, so um, uh, it, it's funny here, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, so you do have some process in process now. Are you going to give us a hint of what might be coming up? Matthew has been inspired to paint his drawings, which are completely different from his paintings. Ah, she. In his drawings, he will draw um, four sections on the canvas or on a piece of paper. Two sections are going to be a normal part of the face and the other part of maybe a chin. And then the other two sections are going to be something that he thinks of completely on his own in his own mind. This uh -huh. is also two sections then where he can't quite articulate what he wants to say because of the aphasia due to the accident. Oh, I see. He will draw them in these two segments or their past memories or something that he finds comical. Excellent. And these are new or designs of his artwork that he's been strongly encouraged by many artists that see his work, you should be drawing your paintings yes, and so forth. So that's what he's doing. And those are new things that are coming about. But he still loves nature. He loves reflections yeah. and anything that he can. Time. Oh, I see. Yes. If 
that's yes. that really inspires him. Well, back to nature, you know, it's, it's um, even now for me, I love to get out in the woods mm -hmm. and just mother nature around us, the rustling of the leaves, the sunlight coming through. Uh, as you've caught in your painting here, you, mm -hmm. uh, the sunlight coming through the leaves, the trees. So uh, I can see, along with the viewers, that you have it. You have it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's all coming together, so it's, it's remarkable. I'm so uh, impressed. <laughs> well, uh, we're just about out of time, so would you like to share any closing words with us, uh, especially if you're interested in uh, Matthew's paintings, phone number, uh, website for sales, or even um, a commission, if uh, you would want a, a commission work as Matthew sees things in his eyes, uh, that would be an interesting uh, commission. Did you have? He does do commission work. He has done a few pieces for some people, and he loves to do that. You can find Matthew's art on the website at matthewkurtz.gallery.com. And there you will see many of his paintings. We sell jaclays. Um, some of the paintings have been sold. Some of them we still have available. We also have made cards from some of his top paintings that people love the most. Ah. And those you can find on the website. So it'll be a set of 10 assorted different paintings made into a card. And on the back is his story and the name of the painting. Oh, excellent. Good description. I have seen those. You've shared those with me at a, at a meeting, I believe, here recently. Uh, so that, that, that's great. Um, the, um, in closing, uh, I think we can all be inspired by you, Matthew. Uh, sometimes yeah. we get into a lull and people can't go forward, you know, they get stuck. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you basically got stuck at one point, but you've really come through to be recognized as one of the, the great artists now of Missouri. How do I not? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I love your sense of humor. I hope so. Just visiting, if there's ever a chance to visit with um, uh, Matthew at a uh, venue where he's uh, showing and uh, attending at a reception, you'll be uh, really uh, entertained by uh, inspiring, shall we say, entertaining uh, side. So, well, Brenda and Matthew, on behalf of JCTV Mid Missouri Art News, I I want to thank you so much for contributing to Mid-Missouri Art News, uh, making it a learning and informational and an inspiring experience for all, uh, including our viewers and myself. Any closing words, Brenda or Matthew? Whenever or you have difficulties in life, art has such a wonderful way to express, recover, and find joy once again. And that has been a true mission for him that God's never given up, like I told him. Yes, and so you become God's painter, oh, yeah. artist. Yeah. And so anything you'd like to say or just give us a sign of it? I can go like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, baby. <laughs> That's his signature. No idea why. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, thanks again uh, for being my guest today. And thank you to JCTV producer Gloria and Love and Crew for making it all possible. Uh, thank you, our viewers, for watching. Uh, look for more in Missouri Art News right here at JCTV. And don't forget YouTube. I'm Rick J saying, see you next time. Mm -hmm.